without taking too much time, I want us to go into the word of the Lord. We are reading from the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8. It's a long scripture, but we will not read all of it. We will read bit by bit as we move on. So verse 8, the Bible says, now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be wherever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned in to the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, look, you've been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf? to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall, ha you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. We can stop from there for a moment. Naitwa Elijah Nyamanga, for those who are not, those who do not know me. Najwa kuna watu ambao wajaniona since time began. Naitwa Elijah Nyamanga, ni meokoka, kriso ni buwana. I am a married man. My wife is not in the house. But we thank God, the Lord has blessed us. We have three boys in the house. Now, I want us to share briefly about redigging the well. We are still in the, period, in the season of redigging the wells of our forefathers. And this morning, I want us to look at redigging the wells of service. Redigging the wells of service. Or you can put it this way. Serve as you wait. Serve as you wait. Now, the scripture we have read is talking about a woman, the Shunammite. The Bible says she was a notable woman. Some translation says she was a well-to-do woman. So she was a wealthy person. And uh, if you look at that scripture and you dig well in it, you will realize that this woman was a woman of service. Because even in the village where you come from, if you do not serve people, people will not love you. So, the Bible is saying that Elisha passed through Shunem. And this lady offered him food 
he urged, she urged him to come and eat in her house. And Elisha agreed, and from that moment it, become, it became his custom to come, such that wherever he went to Shunem, he had to pass through that house just to eat. And this woman did not quarrel in her heart because she welcomed the man of God gladly into her house and even into her heart. And so, in the process of time, the Bible records one day Elijah came as usual. And he went up into the upper room where this lady and her husband had made for him. The Bible says they made for him a room in the upper room. And they put a table, a lampstand, and a bed. So that the man of God, when he comes, he will just have time to rest. And so this particular day was a different day from all the other days. So when Elisha entered into that room... He said to Gehazi, call the Shunammite. I want to speak to her. And the Bible says she came and stood at the door. And Elisha said to Gehazi, ask her. She has gone through a lot for us. What can we do for her? Can we speak to her on her behalf to the king or to the commander of the armies. And when Gehazi said that to her, she said, I dwell among my people. I dwell among my people. Meaning, I have no problem. My people love me and I, they take care of me. I have no problem. Then Elisha said to Gehazi, what can we do for her? She has gone through a lot for us. There must be something we can do. Then Gehazi alikuja na mambo zingini. Akasema, ana mtoto na mme wake ni mzee. Bwana sifiwe. She has no child and the husband is old. You can guess what Gehazi is saying. Then Elisha says, now call her. And when she came, she stood at the doorway and Elijah began to speak. Elisha began to speak over her life. I say this was a different day from all the other days which Elijah used to, to come. So, Elisha began to prophesy over her life. And Elijah said to her, a time like this next year, you will embrace a son. A time like this next year, you will embrace a son. What was the response of the, 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 the Shunammite woman? He said, she said, stop it there, man of God. I know you are a holy man of God, but just stop it there. Don't cheat your servant. No. So there is something I am learning from this woman. He, she had some expectations in life, just like you are, and you and me, we have. But in the process of time, the expectation faded away. And so she resigned to fate. Like any other woman, she had desired to have a baby. But as time went by, that hope or that expectation of having a baby faded. So akarudi kwa kijiji kwa watu wake. And she dwelt among them peacefully, well. But it is like that wound had not yet healed properly. And it's like the man of God has come to step on that wound again. 
So this lady is telling the man of God, don't, don't bring all these fantasies back again. I had left them. Don't bring all these expectations. They had died away. But the Bible is saying, the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the expectations of the poor shall not die forever. Yes, this lady thought that her expectations had died. No chance for her to get a baby. And even Gehazi is confirming this, that the husband is old. But this day, because of the service which this lady had been offering, I believe to, the, to, to, to her own people and even to the man of God, he was, she was moving towards some, somewhere. So there are some things I want us to learn from this scripture about serving. You have got no reason not to serve the Lord. You have got no reason not to serve the Lord. Whatever situations you are going through, you can't have a reason and say, because I am going through this, I have no place. I cannot serve the Lord. No. In that condition where you are in, you can still serve the Lord. Because serving the Lord will do some great things into your life. Now, this woman said to the man of God, don't go there. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. But the Bible records that came next year, at that particular moment, she was embracing a son. Meaning the word of the prophet had come to be fulfilled in her life. You may be living peacefully with your people. You may be living peacefully in your place of work. But there is something that people cannot give you. There is something you cannot get from them. That desire of your heart, you may not get it from them. Even though they love you. Even though they take care of you. Like this woman was being taken care of. And he was also taking care of other people in the society. He was loved. But there was something in her heart which no one could give. It needed a higher grace to come and speak over her life so that that thing can come out and be fruitful in her life. But this one was occasioned through service. So we are talking about redigging the wells of service. And I am saying, as you wait, serve. Or serve as you as you wait. You have got your expectations in life. Maybe they have tarried, but keep on serving. Now, what does serving or what does serving the Lord do to us as Christians? Now, we are Serving the Lord will draw you closer. Serving the Lord will draw you closer to God. And it will improve your relationship with Him. So when you sit and just stay there and not serving the Lord, your relationship with God will die. Your conscience, as far as serving the Lord is concerned, will die. That's why it is good for you to serve the Lord in your own capacity, the way, the way you are, you cannot say you can't serve the Lord. You cannot say there is nothing you cannot do for God. There is something you can do for God. And that can touch the heavens. And the heaven can release something good in your life. Now, there are some few truths I want us to learn. Then we shall bring it to a close. I have said serving the Lord draws you closer to God and keeps your relationship with God alive. Number two, serving the Lord has got a reward from the Lord. Serving the Lord has got a reward. You cannot serve the Lord without 
expecting something from the Lord. God will surely bring something into your life. I remember Peter telling the Lord, we have left everything. We have left our families. We have left our businesses. What is there for us? What did the Lord say? That anyone who has left all these things, they shall reap a hundredfold here on earth. And at the end of it, eternal life. So there is an eternal reward because of serving the Lord. So it is my encouragement to you, to all of us, that let us keep on lighting the candle of service in our lives. Because there is eternal reward that is attached to serving the Lord. There is eternal reward that is attached to serving the Lord. Again, serving the Lord will lead you to the doorway of your breakthrough. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Serving the Lord will lead you to the doorway of your breakthrough. This woman had been serving. He served the man of God without murmuring. And each and every time the man of God went into her house, she, pre she prepared food. Maybe she gave her water for a shower. She did all those things. It was a service unto the man of God. And let me tell you, the man of God in this lady's life was representing the kingdom of God. So by her accepting Elisha into her house, he was accepting God himself. The kingdom of God had come to dwell with this lady in her, in her home. Her life must not remain the same. There must be something that has to be done in her life in reward for her service. So I am saying, serving the Lord will lead you to the doorway of your breakthrough. Yes, this lady had been having that expectation of having a child. It was not forthcoming. But this day when Elijah came in and prophesied over her life, because of the service she had been rendering, when she was told, come, he came and stood at the doorway. And the man of God began to prophesy. She was standing at the doorway of her breakthrough. And from that day on, her life got turned around. If she was being called a barren woman in the village, you know they can call you without letting you know. Hata kama wanakupenda sana. Si huyu mama anasema alikuwa anapendwa. She was living well among her people. But there were some people who were pointing finger at her and say, you know, she's a barren woman. She has no children. But God came to turn around that situation. It was because of service. So as you wait for that which you desire to see God do in your life, don't just sit. Do something for the kingdom of God. Serve as you wait. Serve as you wait. So I've said, serving the Lord leads you to the doorway of your breakthrough. You can read 2 Kings 4 verse 13. You'll get that, that part of it. Another one is that serving the Lord leads you into worship. Serving the Lord leads you into worship. The Bible records that in the process of time, as the child was growing, one day the child went to his father and the child was crying saying, my head, my head. And the father said to the servant, take her to her mother. And when the mother took hold of her, of the boy, the Bible records the boy stayed at the lap of her mother until noon 
and then the boy died. Bwana sifie sana. The boy died. Sometimes our expectations can come and in the process of time it looks like they are dying out. But I'm here to tell you that that which has got the breath of God does not die. Bwana sifie sana. That which has got the breath of God does not die. It is the Lord through prophet Elisha who prophesied that this lady is going to have a son. And now the hand of death has come and is robbing this lady of her of her gift. We see at this moment she went to the husband and said she took the boy, the dead child to the the doorway. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Aliingia kwa hiyo doorway. Akaweka mtoto kwa kitanda. He placed the boy on the bed of Elisha and he locked the door and went out. He told the husband, "Give me a servant and an ass, I'm a donkey." And he saddled going to the man of God. He was going to look for the man of God. To cut the story short, when he, she reached the man of God, she got hold of her. She got hold, hold of Elisha. And she opened her mouth and said, Holy man of God, did I ask you for a son? Did I ask you for a son? Did I not tell you not to, to bring back my hope? Then Elisha realized the boy is no more. Elisha told Gehazi, take my staff, run and lay it on the, the face of the boy. But the lady stuck at the feet and said, as long as you live, as long as your God lives, I am not leaving you here. I am going with, with you. When I say, you know, it is not the staff that gave the prophecy to the woman. It was the man of God. So this lady was saying, you just take the staff. I have no problem. But this man, I did not ask him for. I am going with him. She was bitter in heart. Her expectations were dying off. But eventually, Elisha reached the place. Elisha, Elisha prayed. The Bible says, the boy was revived. He came back to life and he said to Gehazi, call the lady in. And when she came in, the man of God said to him, embrace your son. This is now the second time this lady is embracing the son. Embrace your son or take hold of your son. At that moment, the Bible says she knelt down at his feet. She knelt down at the feet of Elijah. What was she doing? It was worship. She was thanking the God of Elijah for raising her son back to life. So I was saying, serving the Lord will lead you to the doorway of your breakthrough and serving the Lord will lead you into worship. When you have seen the mighty acts of the Lord, you cannot afford to worship the Lord. You will just worship him. Your heart will flow with worship because of what the Lord has done into your life. So here we are also dealing with lost hope. There are people who have lost their hopes in life and they do not know how they can pick it up again. This lady lost it. She lost it, but she never lost service. She lost the hope of getting a baby. The years were going, flying past by each and every day. And the chances of their 
them getting a baby was becoming slim. That's why Gehazi is saying the husband is old. That means your guess is as good as mine. The husband is old. Nothing can come out of this kind of union. But serving the Lord can restore that hope. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Maybe you have lost your hope. There is still chance. Maybe you are serving the Lord. But because of one, two, three things in your life, which were not very pleasant, you ran away from the service of the Lord. And now you are just there. You can still come back to the service of the Lord. Because in serving the Lord, that is where there is your life. That is where there is breakthrough. That is where your worship, the worship of God will be ignited in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We are redigging the well of service. We are redigging the wells of service. And I am saying, as you wait, as you serve, wait. As you serve, wait. God will surely come through for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What you need to do is just to have hope in God. It reminds me of Rahab of old. Rahab is taking the spice in, in, into her house. And the people of Jericho are looking after the spice. But the Bible says she hid them under the stalks in the upper room. Meaning this lady lifted up her faith. He was serving the people of God. And as they, they were leaving, the Bible records, she lowered them through the window, down, using a rope. This is what I want us to get. That as you, we serve the Lord, there are some promises the Lord has given unto us that will only be activated into our lives through service. Now, Rahab is letting them go down using a rope. And they told Rahab, tie this scarlet yarn at the window so that when we come back, we will see it. It will be very easy for us to locate where you are. So the spies are going down to the ground of the promise. Rahab is remaining there at the window. It is the window of hope. And it is connected to the ground of the promise, through the rope of faith. She knew that these people, they have promised me, they are coming back for me. This is what I am saying. The Lord is surely going to come through for you. The promises the Lord has made concerning your life, every prophecy the Lord has spoken concerning your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. So you, you are not supposed to lose heart. You are not supposed to be discouraged in life. I don't know what situation you are going through in. I know mine. I don't know yours. But the Lord is a faithful God. Serve him with gladness. Situations may not permit it, but just serve the Lord. Maybe you are wondering, how can I serve the Lord? You can serve the Lord. In the house of God, there are a lot of work. You can tag along. You can find something to do in the house of the Lord. Don't just sit there and just pray that things will be all right. Yes, they will be all right as you serve the Lord. We are redigging the wells of service. How is your service to the Lord? There are some of us we are just in the church. We just come here on the way we are Sunday. Back next Sunday. There's, you, 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 you are nowhere. Some of us, wakona wao, biri wao, wa TV. So they don't even see the need of coming to church. 
anasema mimi niko na pastor wangu wa TV. I have come here to tell you today, don't cheat yourself. Huyo si pastor wako. Bwana asifiwe. Huyo si pastor wako kwa sababu pastor wako lazima akujue na wewe umjue pastor wako. Such that when your countenance changes, when something is pushing you hard that there is no joy in your face, your pastor will be able to know huyu mshirika wangu there is something wrong. And she is able to speak or he is able to speak over your life. Bwana asifiwe sana. That is what happened to this lady. Elisha knew the heart. Kuna kitu kilikuwa ndani yake. So Elijah, Elisha began to speak over the life of this lady. Elisha became the pastor. Bwana asifiwe sana. So usijidanganye ati unaweza kaa kwa nyumba uwatch TV. Ati my pastor ni fulani fulani wa TV. Huyo si pastor wako. Amewahi kukusomea. Bwana asifiwe sana. Huyo pastor wako wa TV amewahi kukusomea. Eh? Unijua mimi sahihi nikifanya makosa, pastor Millicent will know na ataniambia tu wewe ume, umepotoka. Huyo ndio pa? Pastor. Lakini ule wa TV, huyo ni wa TV wachana naye. Serve God where the Lord has placed you. This is the altar where the Lord has placed you. Serve God here and you will see the breakthroughs that the Lord is giving unto you. Now, serving the Lord also pushes you into the realm of the miraculous. Bwana asifiwe sana. Serving the Lord pushes you into the realm of the miraculous. That such that that which is hard with men will come to pass in your life. Bwana asifiwe sana. It pushes you into the realm of the miraculous such that miracles will just be a common place in your life as you serve the Lord it happened to this Shunammite woman as she was serving a miracle happened something which she had longed for for many years and was not forthcoming it came as a miracle through the declaration of the prophet of the Lord over her life. Bwana asifiwe sana. So, it leads you into the realm of the miraculous. God will, you will not serve God and just remain the same. God will work out a way on how to let you live. You will not just survive. You will live through the provisions of the Lord. So, Serving the Lord pushes you into the realm of the miraculous. Let miracles happen in your life as you serve God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, those are the, the, the truths I wanted to share with us. And I believe the Lord has spoken unto you. But this is what you are supposed to remember. That as you wait, serve God. As you wait, serve God. Maybe you are a young person here. You are not married. As you wait, serve, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. As you wait, serve the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The expectations of the righteous will never be cut short. As you serve God, those expectations that you have, God is working on them. Yes, the needy shall not always be forgotten. You may be forgotten by your people, but God will not forget you. The service you do to the Lord will not go unnoticed. It will touch the throne of grace and a reward will be released that befits you. When I say, serve God. Serve God. Within the, the limited time the Lord has given you in this world, serve God.
Don't just walk aimlessly. Hmm? Don't just walk like kuna mtu kwa Biblia alikuwa anatembea tu. She became a vagabond. Alikuwa anaitwa nani? Cain. Cain alikuwa anatembea tu. You, <laughs> she could not serve, he could not serve the Lord. You are not like him. You are a child of God and the Lord has given you everything that pertains to life. You can serve him. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. What is it that is hindering you from serving the Lord? Today I want us to begin redigging the wells of service. As we dig, we also possess. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. The wells of service. Please don't just sit in church. Unakuja, unaenda. Mm-mm. Look for something to do in the house of the Lord. Serve God. Serve this altar. It will speak over your life. It will speak over your life. If you have identified with Bishop Jimmy Kimani as your pastor, serve him. You never know. A day he will come here and begin to prophesy over your life. And it will come to pass. Serve the Lord. Let this altar register that you are here. And it will register that through your service. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So serve God. Serve God. There are so many places in the church you can serve. We need Sunday school teachers. Na we we unaweza fundisha. Na hata kama ujui pasa kaunda can do the the training for you. Hata mimi sikujua. But I'm in the mold na isa fundisha mtoto. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. So there are, there are there are things you can do in the house of the Lord. There are things you can do in the house of the Lord. Serve God. Drop every excuse that you may be having because it is leading you nowhere. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. God is calling you into his vineyard. God is calling you into his vineyard that you may be a servant there. That you may be a co-worker with him there. But you are not doing it. Don't murmur. Stop murmuring. Rise up and serve the Lord. I don't know what came into your heart that stops you from serving the Lord. You can make it. You can make this day a new day for your life. A day of a turnaround. That God is going to come through for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And again, you cannot serve the Lord if you are not born again. That is the starting point. That is the starting point. You cannot serve God and you don't know that God you want to serve. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. Let him take over and you will serve him well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As I finish, I want you just to remember that it is good to serve the Lord. Serving the Lord makes your relationship with God strong. Serving the Lord has an eternal reward. You cannot serve the Lord and the Lord take no notice of your service. No. There is an eternal reward for it. Serving the Lord leads you to the doorway of your breakthrough. Maybe that which you've been looking for for so many years, it is attached to the service of the Lord. Tag in and let the Lord do the work for you. Bwana sifuye sana. Serving the Lord leads you to the doorway of your breakthrough. Serving the Lord leads you into worship. When you see the great things that the Lord has done as you serve him, you will only go down on your knees and worship him. Serving the Lord leads you or pushes you into the realm of the supernatural. You will be walking into the miraculous. Things will happen into your life. How? Because your service to the Lord 
will be registered to, in heaven and uh, an answer will be released. I am finishing up now. But for you to serve the Lord, first of all, all you have to register. Registering means give your life to, to the Lord. Let him take over and let him show you the way. I want to give you a chance. If you are here and you have not registered, if you are here, you have not given your life to the Lord, that is the starting point. That is the starting point. We can pray with you and you will receive Jesus now. Is there anyone who would want to give his life to the Lord? Even as I welcome Pastor Kaunda to come and pray with us. Serve the Lord. As you wait, serve the Lord. As you wait, serve the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus.